All right. Uh, this is the other problem we did in class. Another review problem could be on your uh, problem like this could be on your unit two test. Um, and certainly questions like this could show up on the AP test in the spring. So this was from uh, 2016, question number one uh, from the old AP microeconomics test. So with a, without any further ado, let's dive in. I'm going to have the question on this page and I'll actually try answer it on the second page um, just because of space here. So we're looking at three markets in this problem, the markets for bananas, muffins, and coffee, and they're all related to each other um, and the competitive market. So there's nothing funky going on there. Um, part A says in the market for bananas, the equilibrium price is $1 per pound and the equilibrium quantity is a thousand pounds per week. Now suppose the government imposes a price floor at $1.20 per pound, causing the quantity supply to increase to 1500 pounds per week. Question asks us, would there be a, you know, price, would that price floor cause a shortage or a surplus or neither and explain? Um, for me, this one doesn't ask me to draw a graph, but I'd probably off on my scratch paper somewhere, draw my demand and my supply and put in those equilibriums. This was uh, $1 and 1000 and then add a dollar twenty. Um, I know that this quantity supplied increased to 1500 And I think by putting that in there, uh, it's going to make it a little bit easier for me to answer this because I can clearly see that the quantity supplied of 1500 is greater than my quantity demanded. So I would say quantity supplied is greater than quantity demanded. Therefore, we have a surplus. Graphically, it makes it easy to see, um, and it'll help me answer, hopefully, the next part of my problem, too. Next, I have to calculate the elasticity of supply uh, if the price increased from $1 to $1.20. So, part two of A, I have to calculate elasticity of supply. Well, that's always percent change in quantity given a percent change in price. Uh, going from 1000 to 1500 is a 50% increase in quantity. My price from $1 to $1.20 is a 20% increase in price. If you can't figure out how to calculate percents, go and review that. Uh, but new minus old over old. So my elasticity is 2.5. Boom. I'm happy with that. Part three. Um, by the way, I did say show your work, so I did write the whole thing out there. Um, between $1 and $1.20, is it elastic, unit elastic, or inelastic? Well, my E equals 2.5 is greater than 1. Therefore, we're going to call that elastic demand. Um, basically, the quantity change was much greater than the price change. That's what elastic means. I am absolutely flying through this problem. Um, hope that's all right with all of y'all. All right, now we're on to the second part of the question. We were looking at uh, bananas first. Now we're looking at the muffin market. And it says draw a correctly labeled graph of the muffin market indicating um, our equilibrium price and quantity as P0 and Q0. So now we do have to draw a graph. So let's quick draw it. Um, all of these things, make sure you label your, you know, I didn't label on my scratch work, I didn't label my graph, but if this is my um, actual answer, I'm going to make sure I label it well. And please label your equilibrium price over on the axis. Don't write it in over here where the intersection is. Um, I'm not sure but you might not get credit for that. So there we go. There's my equilibrium market. Nothing special about this one. Um, on the graph in B1, show the impact of an increase in the price of bananas on the muffin market. Remember, this is my, maybe I should label this, but this is my muffin market. And if we increase the price of bananas, well, I don't 
as a buyer of bananas, I don't ever, I'm sorry, a buyer of muffins, a consumer of muffins, I don't ever really consider the price of bananas in deciding whether I want to buy a muffin or not. The cost of bananas really impacts the sellers because it's a, it's a, it's an ingredient that they use to make their muffins. And so really what's happening is that it, that increase in the price of the bananas is going to decrease the supply of uh, muffins. It's more expensive to produce them. So there's going to be a decrease in supply. Notice I drew in my supply curve. I showed an arrow moving it to the left. Um, you could probably draw an arrow going up, which kind of indicates, you know, the, the increased price, but it is good to include arrows in your reasoning that's included in the instructions. And then I also had to label my new equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. Doesn't even hurt to throw in arrows here, show the price went up and the quantity would go down. So there we go. That's part two I, on that graph, I did it. Now part three on the th same graph, completely shade the area that represents the change in computer uh, consumer surplus. And that's the big thing there, it's the change. So I'm gonna do this because I can, and I'm on a computer. Um, before the uh, increased price, that was the consumer surplus. Now, ooh, I could even color it in. Now, after the change, after that increase in price, we have a much smaller consumer surplus. There it is, which means the change is the area in between there. Um, so obviously, since I have to shade in the change, this was the area that I lost of consumer surplus. So I'm going to shade that in. That's what part three was asking for, the change. Last part of my problem, I'll just do it right, I'll do it right here, C. Now we are looking at the market for coffee. Coffee is related to muffins. What I don't know is whether our people buy a muffin or a coffee which would mean they're substitutes for each other, or if people buy a muffin and a coffee. Now, I could make an assumption based on real life, but that's not safe. What I need to do is look at what I'm told, which is the cross price elasticity of coffee with respect to muffins is negative two. I honestly don't memorize what the cross price elasticity positive versus negative means. I immediately go to just an example in my head to help me figure it out. So we know, you know, that elasticity is that percent change in uh, quantity given a percent change in price. So in my head, I just think of two things that are, I'll start, I'll just, sorry, I should start with saying, if I have a cross price elasticity, I don't know anything about the income elasticity, which would tell me if it's a normal good or an inferior good. Remember, normal goods are things I buy more of if my income goes up. Uh, inferior goods are things that I buy less of, like ramen noodles, if my income goes up. Um, but I don't have an income elasticity or I only have cross price. So the only thing I can know is whether it's a complement or a substitute. So again, I go to an example of like peanut butter and jelly. If the price of peanut butter goes up, these are complements. If price of peanut butter goes up, am I going to buy more or less jelly? Well, I'm probably the price of peanut butter goes up, so I'll buy a little less of it, which means I need less jelly. So I would assume the quantity of jelly would go down. A negative over a positive gives me a negative cross price elasticity. So things with a negative cross price elasticity must be things like peanut butter and jelly, which are complementary goods. Uh, if you wanted to use you know substitutes think of like playstation and xbox and how that relation would be if the price of a playstation goes up people buy more xboxes so that has a positive to a positive uh so the elasticity would be positive but anyway i am going to say with confidence that these are complementary goods meaning that if that people buy them together people buy coffee and muffins together
Now, assume the supply of coffee is perfectly elastic. Show the equilibrium price and quantity given above, so $3 and 100 cups, um, and draw a correctly labeled graph. So this is kind of like problem B. Make sure, again, that, of course, you uh, label your axes. Here's the trick. We have perfectly elastic supply, which means we have that horizontal supply curve. Perfectly inelastic would be a, a vertical line. And that must be at $3. And then demand, we'll just assume, is downward sloping like normal. And that's at $3, and that was at 100 cups of coffee. I think that's all I needed to do on that, so I'm going to jump ahead to number three here. Given the uh, original quantity of cups, 100 cups of coffee, if they increase the price of muffins 10%, calculate the new equilibrium uh, quantity in the coffee market. And I have to show my work. So I know that my elasticity is negative 2.5. And we said we had a 10% increase in price. So how much is my quantity going to change? Well, this is just a simple math problem. I can now solve for my one variable here, my change in quantity. Uh, I take negative 2.5 times 10%, and I would say my percent change in quantity equals negative 25%. I lied. My cross price elasticity was negative two. I was thinking of a, a my other problem above where elasticity was, whoops, where my elasticity was 2.5. So I changed that answer. Oh, get my eraser instead here. Negative 20% change. Whew. Glad I corrected that. Well, if I had 100 cups of coffee, 20% of uh, 100 is 20, so I'm going to lose 20%. I'm going to be down to 80 cups as my final answer. That's it. I lost 20%. Um, I think that's all I've got for you. If you've got any questions, again, as always, be sure to ask questions. Uh, otherwise, suggest go look at some other problems and, and test them. All the uh, Past AP questions are available, so take advantage of that, that library 